Hi everyone. So, in this video what I'm going to be covering is sort of just like an introduction to the Mathematics Internal Assessment, or IA for short. So, this IA Internal Assessment is a mathematical exploration and you can choose pretty much anything you want. You can, any area of interest, it is an opportunity basically given by the IB to sort of apply the stuff you've learnt in class from the course into something that you might be interested in or something important to you or important to the world, anything like that. So this is a hand in assessment. It is worth 20% of your final mark and it is marked internally by your teachers, but it is also sent externally for the IB to review and moderate accordingly. So what are the requirements? Well, it, the page limit is 12 to 20 pages. That's the suggested amount, but that excludes the bibliography and the appendices. However, all the working out should be double spaced and the font size should be legible or readable. And same thing with the margin sizes. Now, in terms of whether or not we should be doing, is there a difference in SL and HL or AA and AI? The main difference is that like the level of maths you should be doing is the level you're doing. So. If I'm doing SL maths, I would have an IA that has mostly SL maths included. If I'm doing HL maths, I'd be including maths from like the HL course, so on. Now you can pretty much use any external software you want. You can use Desmos, you can use a GDC, you can use Excel, you can use absolutely anything you want, as long as you credit it and say that you got it from there. Now, Another thing that is very important is that any pictures, graphs, tables, or anything like that should have titles like figure one, figure two, figure three, and maybe even like saying figure one and then explaining what it is, like a little caption and the name. Now, a lot of these logistics I am going to get into a lot more detail about in another video. Now, you might be thinking, how do I find a topic? There's so much to choose from, like, or it's a bit overwhelming. The main thing is, um, consider anything that you find particularly interesting that you might learn over the two years that you're studying. So I would suggest maybe at the back of your notebook or like on a separate word document or something like that, have an interesting ideas section where you sort of think about any particular areas that really interested you or how you could maybe apply it to real life. Like, you know, if you really like optimization or calculus, you could look at how maybe that could be applied to projectile motion or anything like that. Just sort of keep those things in mind. However, generally speaking, I would do not think it'll be easy to sort of just think of an idea and make it develop off the top of your head. You need to do a lot of research, read into that particular topic that you might be considering and sort of just see if there's any practical applications that haven't been done or any kind of ideas that can sort of help supplement your knowledge. And I would probably say, when you want to draw like certain applications, try to maybe draw from personal interest. Maybe think like if you do basketball, maybe you could look at modeling, optimizing your performance, or if you're really big on stats, maybe you could do some statistical tests, anything like that. You can try to draw from personal interests if possible, just because it might help or something that you can maybe practically apply in real life. Alternatively, where you could also draw from is things of global significance. Maybe you might want to look at overpopulation or climate change or anything really. It's entirely up to you. So these are just a couple ideas that could maybe stimulate it. And I would very much suggest having a bit of a, um, a short list, creating a short list of different ideas and maybe having sub dot points underneath each dot point, each potential idea about how you could approach each idea maybe. I would very much suggest sort of just reading a lot, especially at the start. And another very important thing, when you're deciding a topic, don't leave it to the end. Don't go from like the start of the math course and finish it and then think of an IA topic. You should be thinking about it the whole time you are going through the IB. In my opinion, you should be considering keeping it in the back of your head. Anything new that you get introduced to in class, you could think, okay, could I apply this to an IA? Is there some way I could apply this to a situation that is interesting to me. Now, in terms of the structure, this is just a general little skeleton. I'll go into a lot more details about it in a future video. But first thing you have is a title page and that title page should include the page count and the title of the IA. You should also have an introduction. Now inside the introduction section, you should have a background, rationale and a plan. In my opinion, I think all of those things are very, very important. 
And I'll also say that this structure I'm giving is actually not set in stone. You can actually do whatever you want. What I'm giving you right now is a suggestion, in my opinion, that I think will exploit the marking criteria best. Now, the next section would be a mathematical investigation. That's where like the bulk of your mathematics is, or the testing, or the whatever you're doing, or the calculations. And I would say make sure you have a lot of subheadings inside that mathematical investigation section. Otherwise, it'll be a bit hard to follow. Then you should have a conclusion section, which should have your evaluation and final conclusion. And then you have a bibliography where you include all your, all your references, though you should also be referencing throughout using either in-text or footnotes. And you should also have, optionally, an appendix. You don't necessarily need it, but depending on the IA, sometimes you will need to just throw it in at the end. So, now let's consider about writing the IA. So I'm going to go back to what I said before, Research is very important in creating a short list. Once you've created a bit of a short list, then you can sort of create a pros and cons section for each one. Maybe consider like, oh, maybe this topic is a bit too hard than what I thought it was. Or, you know, alternatively, you could think, oh, this maybe this is a bit too simple. Maybe I won't actually do very well applying this idea. Sort of keep an open mind. Think of a whole bunch of different stuff and sort of brainstorm what would be the good stuff, what would be the bad stuff of each one. And potentially even discuss it with your teacher if possible. Generally speaking, teachers can't say too much about anything, but sometimes they may be able to give you a bit of vague advice or like point you in the right direction if possible or recommend a certain thing to read. Then what I would say is once you've sort of figured out a rough idea of what you want to do, create a skeleton plan. And that would have all the subheadings that I had covered in the structure slide over here. So you would have title page, introduction, background, rationale, plan, and then you'd have dot points underneath each of these points. And that way you can sort of have a skeleton plan of what you want to do. Then what I also want to say is that when you're writing it, you should be using the equation mode of Microsoft Word, or you should be using LaTeX or anything that looks a lot more professionally mathematics. I do not suggest just writing like the default Microsoft Word number format. It doesn't look as good. Now, in terms of using equation mode, I will address that in a later video. Now, the next step is very, very important. You should never be pending in a first draft wherever possible. You should be drafting, rereading it, considering more, redrafting it, read it again, redraft, so on and so forth. You've got to keep doing that. And also, your teacher should be able to give you a little bit of feedback. Where and when they decide to do that is sort of just depends on the teacher's discretion. But if possible, try to discuss a few things. They generally speaking can't give you any ideas and they can't really like do too much. They can't get too involved, but they generally should be able to give you some kind of general guidance. Maybe even just telling you maybe the idea needs more development or it's a bit too complicated or anything like that. And yeah, that concludes my introduction. And all I'll say is good luck and I'll be seeing you all in the next video.